Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome back to another discussion. As you remember, if you did watch my last video, I did an update of my kennel from 4972 to 41972. And the last thing I stated was that if you don't see an update, or if you're still watching this, and then most likely that kernel update was successful, there were no problems, and I'm currently using it because once I rebooted, there was no real good way for me to go in. I'm not a good video editor. I do all these things pretty much as, as I go through one take. <laughs> I don't like to edit. Uh, everything seems to go wrong whenever I try to edit. Anyway, back to this. So everything appeared perfect. Everything was looking like it was working. I tried to test the things that I use on a regular basis and everything was running as I thought it should. And then a couple of days later, I was talking to someone who is also another YouTuber and dabbles with Gen 2 every once in a while. And he was complaining about some of the uh, hardware in his system not functioning properly. And one of them was his SD card reader. SD card reader is something I don't use on a very regular basis, um, but every once in a while I do have a need. I, I tend sometimes just to use a USB stick and throw the SD into that and go that route instead of actually using the, the built-in SD reader. But I do know that it was for working and functioning properly with the 4972 kernel update. And while we were troubleshooting some steps, I had showed him what I had loaded that worked with my old kernel. And since then, of course, I'd updated the 419. And I went back to look at all of this. I then found that, wait a minute, my SD card isn't working now. What is wrong? So I went into the terminal here. And I did an LS mod, and I saw that the RTSX PCI and the RTSX PCI SD MMC were not loaded. Um, and if we do that again and pipe to grep MMC here, I did see the MMC core, but nothing else. Those other two were just missing. So then what I did was I did an LS boot, config, and looked at my original kernel configurations. I also piped out MMC. And make sure you use, whenever you're looking for anything inside of your config files, always use the caps. Uh, otherwise, you'll find nothing. And so I found that config MMC was set to make, and that looked all good. But then I found that SDHCI PCI was not set, and inadvertently also my MMC Realtek PCI was not set. Now, at least this was set properly for 4972, and if I went into 41972, I saw that those weren't there. So I did another update to the kernel. I, I went into user source Linux. Uh, as super user, went ahead and read, made the make menu config. And I saw, sure enough, those are not set whatsoever. And I could not even see the Realtek PCI option whatsoever because a dependency of that is the SDHCI PCI. So I figured out where that should be. I went to it, enabled it as a module. And then after I enabled it as a module, I went back into where all the driver settings were. And then I could see this right here where I could go ahead and configure it and set it. When I went back in to look at that, I saw that in parentheses, it said new. What I'm thinking might have happened is they updated that particular driver. And because it was slightly different, and even though when I did the merge of the two configurations, it should have enabled it. I believe there must either been a hiccup or something else that did not set that properly. And that's why when you do an update with a kernel, you really ought to check all of the things. And like I said, I seldom use my SD card reader. In fact, if Irish had asked me about it, I might not have even known that that was a problem until the next time I did try to use it. And thankfully, I'm glad it kind of happened when it did, because a month down the line from now, I might not have even been thinking about it and been racking my brain what's wrong and having to start all over inventing the wheel. 
Another strange thing occurred to me, and I only noticed this just a couple days ago. I was doing something. Now, I have a, a um, touch screen. So right now I'm using my finger on the touch screen, and I'm just moving stuff around and highlighting up and down, and it's working. But I, know, I, I use that mainly when I'm in the browser to zoom in or scrolling, that sort of thing. And I really don't use that feature for much of anything else. It's not something that's normal uh, for me to, to function with. But I suddenly noticed my touch screen's no longer working. What's going on here? So once again, I thought, okay, something's not right with the, with the kernel. Maybe I, something else hiccuped. So then I did that LS mod again and did a grip on what would have been the touch screen here. And I was like, no, it's there. It's good. And, well, that's strange. So I rebooted and went into the old kernel you know, using 4972 just to check it out. And for some reason, it was no longer functioning with my old kernel. So, well, this is even stranger. So this system is so old, I still have a partition right before Gen 2 went to Plasma, which has one of the last updated supported versions of KDE 4. And I booted into that because that's kind of like the, the rock solid, everything just functions, but it's really old. And so I went into there and sure enough, my touchscreen still did not work. Well, panic starts to set in and I start to think, Maybe my touchscreen has gone bad. Maybe my touchscreen has died. This is a seven-year-old computer that I've been running for a lot of years, and I've had Gen 2 on it since the very beginning. So maybe, because at one time, this thing overheats greatly. I've always had problems with, with that, to the point where I've had to put a second motherboard in it already just to be able to repair some of the damage a couple years ago when my sound stopped working and everything else. And, and when I am compiling code, sometimes I see my temperatures get all the way up to close to 100 degrees Celsius. And that gets to be a little too hot to be running for 12 straight hours for compiling code. It's just not a good thing. So I'm starting to panic about that. And then, of course, the last thing that pops in my mind is, Okay, you've rebooted into three different versions of Gen 2, two of which always worked with no problems. What else could be that? And I thought, you know, sometimes a reboot, a warm boot, where you're just telling it to restart, doesn't always clear everything. So I powered off the laptop. I let it sit for a couple of seconds, powered it back on. Lo and behold, even though the HID multi-touch module had been loading, there were no errors that I could find in dMessage. There was no problem that I could see with an LSUSB-V to look at uh, the, the hardware. But after a cold start, my screen started functioning again, and I could use it. Now, I didn't want to just say, woohoo, because you know that used to do that all the time with my sound drivers when they were failing because of the overheating issue. They'd work for a little bit, and they'd get too hot, and they'd crash again. But it has now been a good four or five days. My touchscreen is still functioning, and it functions in all the different versions. So I have come to the conclusion that in this case, there are certain functions of the kernel that even though I restarted and it was running 4.19, there are certain features of the kernel that never refreshed itself that must have been holding itself in RAM. And until I did a cold start and it just kind of wiped everything and started over, they weren't actually being affected. Or in this case, it broke the touch screen from functioning until a cold start occurred, if that makes sense. Another strange fallout was I have a game controller. I use QJoy Pad or this right over here for for managing it. And as you can see, it's set up for Minecraft because that's why I use it mostly. Um, and before I did a cold start, my controller was still functioning perfectly. And this is a weird thing I have noticed. And I thought, woohoo, for once I didn't have to reprogram my keys for the game controller. It just, everything was exactly the same. Well, interestingly enough, when I did a cold start, 
I had to reprogram my gamepad as well. The key mappings on the controller, some of them were the same, but I would say about half of them were changed, where when I would press a button on the controller, when I'd look at that screen, it used to be that that was, and I'll pull that back up, it used to be, for instance, that button one was one thing and button two was another thing, and you know, buttons seven and eight, nine and ten, they were all different. And so they were all mapped incorrectly, and I had to come back in here and remap them. And that is something that I have noticed with most kernel updates that I've had to go in and do whenever I update from one version to another version. And it was interesting that when I had just did a warm reboot, that was not an issue. Uh, but after doing the cold start, powering it off completely and back on again, I did have that issue. And I did have to remap not all of them, but some of the keys to make sure that they would function properly again. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. The fact that even though everything may appear proper, everything works good, there's always going to be possibly those few things that you don't think about. And it's best when you're doing a, a big update like this to look at everything, no matter how small, just test it all out. Make sure, of course, those things that you do that are most important to you, you've tested immediately. But think about the things you don't do on a regular basis and go back and look at that. Always make sure to keep your old configuration so that you can go back and compare and look at what did I have set before? Because in the first example, we had an issue of the modules were not redone and I had to actually fix those modules. In the second issue, the modules were good, but a cold start needed to fix them and then it functioned again. And then the third example that I use here is it was working great after the reboot. Everything was fine, but after the cold start, it broke that. So it's interesting. I have here three examples of different things that went wrong at different stages because of three different issues, all because the kernel was updated. It's just something to think about, and hopefully this video is able to help somebody about um, when they do their kernel update. If something is not exactly right, they may need to power cycle completely do a cold start to make it work, and they may need to power cycle and do a cold start to find out that no, that actually broke something, and now I need to get it fixed again. Or there may be certain modules that you initially had uh, set up that are no longer set up. It's always good when you have to turn a module on that you create a log file, a text, a spreadsheet of some sort, any way that you can create yourself notes so that you know that when you get a specific piece of hardware working, that these are the modules that you turned on, that you made this a module, that you had to set this one up inside to build into the kernel. Now, the good thing is that because all of these were modules, it took less than, oh, I'd say, two minutes to go ahead and recompile the kernel, re-inject everything, reboot, test, and find out that everything was functioning fine. Be warned, if you do insert something into the kernel after you've built it, it is almost like a full rebuild because it's having to redo everything. But when you're just dealing with modules, it's a very quick, easy update, and then everything hopefully works, you can test it, and if it doesn't work, you can go back and try again, making sure you have the right drivers. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to somebody. Bye, guys.